Hi, I'm Matthew Toynton. I'm the Stokes Research Fellow in Mathematics at Pembroke College. So I, I work here broadly in an area called group theory. Um, now groups really are ubiquitous in modern mathematics. They come up all over the place. Um, and what particularly interests me and what I tend to work on is, is interactions between groups and other areas of mathematics. So I like, for example, studying groups from a geometric or a probabilistic perspective. And so one way in which geometry can come into the study of groups um, can actually be quite neatly, neatly illustrated um, by something that people often come across even when they're children at school. So when children are learning how to add up, they often use what's called the number line. So this will be familiar to a lot of people, I guess. Um, basically, you have a line where you have the numbers minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. And if you um, want to do, say, 2 plus 3, you, you start at 2, you, you walk forward three spaces, and you, you've ended up at 5, and that tells you that 2 plus 3 equals 5. And um, it turns out that um, if, you, if you have more complicated mathematical operations that you want to understand, it's also possible to draw their version of a number line. So rather than being a straight line like it is with um, numbers under addition, um, you might get a, a more complicated picture, um, some space that sort of folds back on itself or goes off in different directions. Um, but conceptually, it's still essentially the same type of thing as a number line. And then you can study the geometry of this object to allow you to get more of a handle on whatever mathematical operation or group of operations it was that you started with in the first place. One of my favourite ways to study these, um, what I call number lines, these diagrams that represent more complicated groups of operations, um, is to use uh, probability. Uh, so one way in which you can do that is to use something called a random walk. Now, random walk is conceptually, again, quite easy to illustrate. Um, uh, something that people often use is, is, is they say, you, you imagine a drunk person walking around in a city um, and they don't know their way home, they don't know where they're going, and so each, at each point when they come to a junction or they come to a crossroads, they take a random decision. They either turn left, they turn right, they keep going, or they turn back where they came from. Uh, and this then means they sort of walk randomly around the city. Uh, and, and there are various natural questions one might like to ask about this walk. So, for example, will this person eventually find their way home, or is there some risk that they wander off forever, never to be seen again? Um, if they do get home, how long is it likely to take? Um, how far are they likely to have traveled in the meantime? Um, so all these various natural questions you can ask and that, are, that make sense to study about this random walk. Um, and if instead of imagining a walk, someone walking randomly around the map of a city, if you instead imagine them walking randomly around, um, well, you view one of these diagrams, these number line diagrams, as, as a sort of the map of a space of some kind. You imagine somebody walking randomly around these um, this space, um, then again it makes sense to ask all of these questions that I described before and it turns out that the answers to these questions are intimately linked to various um, uh, deep properties of the um, group of operations that you started with. Uh, so right now what I'm working on uh, with a co-author from Paris is trying to understand the behaviour of these random walks um, a little bit more precisely in certain contexts. So the way we're doing that is actually to use yet another perspective on these networks representing um, groups of operations that I was talking about earlier. So if you, if you, if you take such a network, you can imagine it um, as an electrical network. Um, and you can then pretend you're passing a current through it or putting potential at different points and see what, see what happens. Um, and in particular, it makes sense to talk about the resistance between two points on the network. Um, and it turns out that um, resistance in this way um, is well known, in fact, to, to be linked to the, um, the behavior of the random walk in certain ways. So, for example, I asked earlier about this, this question about if you have a, a drunk person who's walking around and you want to know, um, will they eventually make it home or not? Um, it turns out you can, you have to be a bit careful, but you can define the resistance to infinity in an infinite network. And if the resistance to infinity is infinite, that tells you that the drunk will eventually find their way home. So somehow they won't disappear off to infinity if the resistance to infinity is infinite when viewed as an electric network. Um, you can also um, study um, random walks on finite networks in this way. Uh, and this is one of the techniques that Michael and I are using. So we're, we're 
we're getting a description of the resistance that you can have between um, pairs of nodes in, in a finite network representing certain groups of operations, and then we're using that to describe the behavior of the random walk.